Hello ladies and gentlemen, everyone between and beyond, my name is Taylor, and this is Musashi vs. Cthulhu. A little kind of side-scrolling action game that has an interesting story, at least in, from my perspective. So, uh, this game was apparently released in January 14th of 2020, and I found it on Press Engine. So thank you to Press Engine, as well as QI Byte Interactive, the publisher of this title, uh, for the code. I will not let it affect that my... I will not let that affect my opinion of the game, as I never do, but it's one that I wanted to talk about for two reasons. One, I told them I would make a video, and unfortunately I have been very delayed in doing that, uh, because I didn't really know what to say about the gameplay. There's honestly not a lot here. Uh, you either push one of the arrow buttons, directional buttons, whatever you want to call it, or one of the face buttons on your controller, depending on what side the enemies are attacking you from, and you will attack either low, mid, or high on those enemies. Uh, that's the whole thing. And then you score chase against friends and other people on the leaderboards, and I didn't do my research when I was looking into this game, because when I read the title, Musashi vs. Cthulhu, I was like, oh, it's like Tesla vs. Cthulhu, uh, which was a kind of isometric... Uh, action game where you got to fight a bunch of zombies and eventually Cthulhu as like, you know, Nikola Tesla using some funky electric guns. I was like, oh, it must be just their, you know, version of that with, uh, with an Eastern take. I was very wrong. Now, I don't want that to reflect negatively on the game. The game, as far as I can tell, is, you know, it's doing what it's meant to do. It's doing a very basic job, and that's fine. Uh, it does retail for $4.99 Canadian, so honestly, I don't think you're going to get five out of the hours out of this. I played for about 10-15 minutes and decided, you know what, I understand the game, and then I promptly forgot about it. Now, I don't want to put down the developers. I hope they had passion when making this, and I do believe this game does have a place in the world. A place of helping you work on your reflexes, your hand-eye coordination. I do feel like this would be a good way to help people work on their hand-eye coordination, not necessarily to enjoy the story or plot of a game, but to understand, okay, when I see something, how do I react to it? How do I train my eyes to work with my hands to respond to visual stimuli? Now, you're probably thinking, well, most video games do that. That is true. However, most video games also require you to move in a 3D or two-dimensional space, whereas this one doesn't have you move at all, but merely has you respond to a visual well, things move towards you. Obviously, the visuals aren't, you know, cutting edge, and they may be a little scary for, say, a younger child, but, you know, I think a kid who's 10, 11, maybe trying to get into video games, and doesn't, or someone who doesn't have a very good reaction speed, would benefit from something like this. Now, I am saying this partly because I'm trying to, you know, extend the video. I don't want it to be a 30-second video of, oh, I tried this game, and I didn't like it because I do feel like it has a place somewhere. I'm just not 100% sure where that place is. It also speaks to how, as consumers, as people who purchase or, you know, in my case, sign up for a game code, need to be very aware of what product you're actually asking for. I saw the title, I looked at the thumbnail, I was like, okay, this looks cool. Didn't look at the gameplay for a second, and that's my own fault. It should serve as a reminder that Things aren't always what they appear, especially when we create expectations based on other things. I have no idea if this game was developed with the intention of kind of playing off the success of Tesla vs. Cthulhu, or if it just happened to be a very similar naming convention, but I created the association in my head, and that was my fault. That was me assuming something about the game without the game telling me what it was which I think unfortunately happens a lot, especially with some of, you know, larger AAA titles. We assume what a game is going to be based on a very curated trailer, a cinematic here or there, and then it's not presenting what it actually is. Now, a lot of that comes down to the marketing team, but at the same time, it is a problem. And I don't blame Musashi for this. This was purely on me, but it does highlight kind of a wider problem in the gaming industry. So once again, thank you to Press Engine and to, oh boy, I'm going to butcher this, uh, QI Byte Interactive for gifting me this code. I understand it was probably a weird request getting asked for a code in 2024, uh, but hey, appreciate you willing to give it to me. 
I do think you made an interesting experience, and I hope that you have found success with more fleshed out games, let's say. Well, that'll be it for me, ladies and gentlemen, everyone who beyond. I understand this was kind of a weird one, but it's one that I had requested without really thinking about it, then got flooded with other approvals for previous requests, and then just kind of it got kicked to the back burner, I hate to say. But it is out now. I will leave a link down below for it if you want to check it out yourself. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.